Sorry about that interruption, boys. Had to roll up the sleeves. You could see the ice. This is the price of looking rich. And today, we're going to be featuring our 2011 BMW X5 50i. And the whole purpose of this series is to give you guys a glimpse of how much it costs to own and operate all these expensive cars that we have. And like I said, today we're gonna to be focusing on my mom's BMW here that we've had for about two and a half years. I have all the service records right here in this binder. And uh, I thought what better way to present it than to look like a typical teenage BMW driver. So uh, with all that out of the way, let's get started. Shall we? This is gonna be a long video because uh, if you don't know, BMWs are hunks of so uh, let's see here. We have the Monroneery label here. This uh, tells you uh, how much the car cost when it was new. And uh, this BMW in particular cost $80,675. Brand new. We of course did not pay that much. We bought it in what? We bought it in January of 2017 for about $25,000, $26,000 plus taxes and all the fees and whatnot. So uh, yeah. Um, okay, yeah, so we have, it was sold, we bought it on January 6th, 2017, and uh, what's the day today, David? Like the first week of August, 2019? Yeah. of August. Yeah. So, uh, the first repair that we ever did to this truck was vent tabs. Um, when we bought this truck, the rear vent tabs, um, one of them was busted off, so uh, I ordered a uh, replacement one, just a single tab. If you try to go through BMW, they say we can't sell you a single vent tab. They try to sell the entire rear HVAC system, which is like $350, plus the ridiculous labor charges that they charge. I think the total came close to like $1,000. I fixed the vent tab for $12.09. Of course, Becca, my little sister, kicked it off like two months later and uh, it's broken again, which uh, I have to order another one, but you know, it was good for like the two months that it was there. So yeah, $12.09. Um, then, uh, uh, these cars, I know everybody, when they think of BMW, thinks of white angel eyes, right? And like these white four rings around the headlights. Um, BMW actually didn't start doing that themselves till around 2013. So this truck being a 2011, actually came with yellow halogen angel eyes which looked disgusting so had to get that fixed had to get that repaired uh what i ended up doing is uh buying lux angel eye uh led lights for the uh halos and that cost me 175 dollars and uh i installed that myself with a lot of assistance from my mom because she has tiny hands um what's next the first of many oil changes. This one I got done at Autobahn Service Center, which is a shop here in uh, Akron. That cost me $154.92. Got an e-check done. When we bought it, it only came with one key. So I had to go get another key from the dealership and get it programmed. They charged me $206.80 for a key and $48.33 to um, synchronize it to the, to the truck and all in after taxes and everything. A uh, new key cost me $272.35. I know this is a little boring, I'm just reading off repairs, but believe me, with this thing being a hunk of status it is, we got some stories. These are just boring repairs. Then, you know, I think this is all within like the first month of ownership. I, I went ahead and got the windows tinted, uh, ceramic tint, to the front two windows, the rear window, the rear uh, trunk window, and I added a sunstrip to the front. All in, that cost me $480. All right, then we bought BMW M logo door sills, uh, just to match the uh, X5 M wheels that it has. Uh, we installed those ourselves, and uh, I bought them brand new from a dealership cost me $356.44. What's next? Oh, we're getting into story number one. Uh, Alright guys, um, I'm going to edit this into the middle of the video. One thing I forgot to add when explaining everything is when we bought this truck, it came with X5M wheels. Uh, those are completely different from the normal X5. This is considered a normal X5. There's a normal X5s and there's the X5M. This truck came with the X5M wheels. So whoever the previous owner was, I think we're owner number three. Uh, the second owner, I'm pretty sure, uh, 
went ahead and uh, replaced the, uh, I think it came with 19 inch M Sport wheels and uh, he replaced it with uh, 20 inch X5M wheels which are completely unique to the X5M. And uh, so uh, basically somebody was jealous when my mom parked in at a gas station, somebody rammed a nail into the sidewall of the truck. Like the way that they, that the way that they put it in there or the way it was stuck, you could tell somebody did it on purpose. And uh, so we went to go get the, uh, a flat repair at a tire shop here in Medina. It cost me $20.95, but when the shop was doing it, they actually cracked the rim. They cracked the rear rim, and uh, then, you know, we had a fight with them, we had to argue. Uh, it's like, a ever since we got it back from the shop, it started leaking 10 times worse than before. Before, it had just a screw. It, we could drive it about three, four days without a problem. And uh, after we got it back, after the flat repair, it was literally leaking all its air out within a couple hours. So obviously, like something went wrong, right? Took it to our, uh, took it to the Autobahn shop again, which is the German shop that we go to. They uh, determined that the wheel was cracked. We tried arguing with the tire shop for like a month or two, but they didn't do anything. And eventually, you know, we just got sick and tired of it. We needed the truck fixed. My mom didn't like filling up the air every single day, so we bought a new wheel from the BMW dealership. And uh, a fun fact about the X5M wheels, which is the center of the t the center of the rim, is actually a different diameter on normal X5s than the fully loaded, like full-on X5M. Um, the X5M actually has a, a smaller diameter than the normal X5, so what we actually had to do was first take it to a machine shop for them to drill out the center of the rim and make it a little wider and then put it on um, it's a bit, it, was a, it was a big headache. All in, guys. A new rim from BMW with uh, the core, the center board out cost me $1,778.99. Next, another oil change, $143.27 at BMW of Westlake, Ohio. Uh, then... I started leaking coolant everywhere, which is a reoccurring issue with this truck, as you'll see as we keep going through the repairs. Um, this time, it was just an expansion tank. Went ahead, ordered a new one from the dealer, and got it installed there, all in $240.71. Not that bad. Um, one of the reverse lights went bad, so I had my German repair shop uh, put in new reverse lights and uh, fix these uh, bottom front LEDs that ran me $144.65. What's next? Touch up paint and uh, a couple different clips for the front bumper. There were pretty big rock chips all around the truck. I'll put some shots in right now so you can see it. Uh, touch it up and uh, about a year later it looks like crap all over again so there's that. Uh, and uh, reoccurring problem, there's uh, the tabs for the bottom of the bumper. Tried getting new screws. Uh, it, 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 Whatever screws BMW gives me, they just don't work for the bottom of the bumper. All in, two different clips and screws and touch up paint, $51.58. Uh, the clips didn't work, got a refund, $11.91. Uh, went back again, got hex screws and more clips, $22.12. So after that, uh, we bought a new battery for $224 from Napa. Then we realized it was cheaper at the uh, BMW dealership anyways, so uh, we returned the battery for $224.16. Then we went ahead and got a battery installed by the dealership. Um, labor came out to $134.97. They wanted $195.55 for the battery, so about 30 bucks cheaper. And uh, after taxes and everything, it came out to $371.54 to put in a new battery and program it which uh, if, if you don't own a BMW, on these, on these BMWs it's a whole hassle. You can't even change the uh, battery by yourself. There is a big computer that sits on top of the battery that uh, I don't even know what it does. It, it's, it's connected to all the electronics in some weird way. I don't know what it does, but um, it's really finicky. It's really cheap, just like everything else on BMWs. And uh, it pretty much forces you to go to the dealership or some advanced German auto shop to go do it. And either way, you know, you, you gotta spend big bucks to even change the battery. You can't do it yourself. Uh, what's next? 
Um, then we got a, another oil change at BMW of Westlake in Ohio. That was $134.58. Um, I don't know what happened, but we ended up getting an oil change within uh, 2,000 miles. So this one was around at 76,000 miles. And I got another one at around 78, almost 79,000 miles. Uh, so another oil change after that, $130.44. Um, at, at this point, the truck started uh, leaking antifreeze like crazy because just like every other BMW out there, the cooling system on this one sucks. And it's made out of really cheap plastic and uh, the engines like to heat soak. And what happens is there's ridiculous heat in the engine bay, then it gets cold and ridiculous heat, then cold and ridiculous heat, then cold. And it causes all the crappy plastic cooling parts in these cars to crack and break pretty much on a yearly basis, if not yearly, like uh, bi-yearly, bi-annually. Um, so, um, went to FCP Euro and ordered a entire box of, uh, <laughs> of coolant to give you an idea of how much it was leaking. Uh, it was $9.29 a bottle. I ordered 10 of them. It cost me $92.90 for a whole case of antifreeze. Um, then I'll put a picture of this. Uh, this this is one of like it's, it's such a funny letter that I got from BMW. It's just so typical BMW. Uh, this is a important safety recall remedy unavailable. Um, what this is is uh, BMW owning up to a fire defect that uh, a lot of their cars have. If you haven't seen the memes already, uh, a lot of BMWs like to catch on fire mainly because their cooling systems break and people cheap out and try to just skip by by just refilling coolant over and over again and uh, they end up overheating or just the entire engine something goes wrong and it catches on fire. So, uh, like I said, here's a letter. You guys are probably seeing it right now. This is a service bulletin that BMW tells us that uh, our BMW, uh, what did they say? Uh, there is a electronic auxiliary coolant pump for the turbocharged engine that could malfunction. This could cause it to overheat, leading to smoldering, and in some cases could possibly result in engine compartment or vehicle fire. And... Uh, I mean, like, that's cool to know, but uh, the remedy is unavailable, so I really don't know what we're supposed to do with that, but there's that. Speaking of coolant problems, we had another coolant problem when I was going to college. Um, I go to Ohio State. It's about two and a half hours away from where I live, and uh, so August 4th of 2018, I decided to go by myself in the BMW to go drop off my clothes and all that other stuff into my dorm and get ready for the upcoming semester. Got there just fine, but on the way back, uh, the mileage was 81,400, and uh, it was about 9, 10 o'clock at night. Everything's pitch black. I'm driving back at around 70, 80 miles per hour on the highway, and all of a sudden, it's like God himself started shaking the truck. I don't know what happened. We were just going super smooth on the highway, and then all of a sudden, it's just cr crazy shaking me. Um, almost drove off into a cliff, okay? I don't even know what went wrong that it was shaking the truck, but it was just ridiculous. Um, got really spooked, slowed down to around 40 miles an hour, started cruising, thought the truck went into limp mode, and uh, I thought I was going to limp it back home. I didn't want to stop because I didn't know what was going wrong. It seemed pretty serious, and I just I didn't want to stop because I thought it wouldn't start, start again, and I didn't want to drag my dad out there and him get all mad at me, so I just kept on trucking. Uh, 30 seconds into keeping on trucking, a 4x4 malfunction light came on, uh, after that, a transmission light came on, and uh, after that, it just like every single light came on within like the next two minutes. The whole dash was lit up, check engine lights, uh, uh, braking systems, the power steering failed, the iDrive, the center screen just kept cycling and dinging every two seconds is ding, this malfunction, ding, this malfunction, ding, this malfunction. Um, the whole gauge cluster was lit up red. Um, and uh, it was just it was just really scary. And the brakes started to fail. So I was going 70 miles an hour and the brakes wouldn't even work. It was like reduced braking, I think is the error that came up. And uh, so what ended up happening is eventually I had to coast it to a stop and I ended up coasting it all the way downhill and then up and then 
right around at the very top of the hill is where I got the BMW to kind of come to a stop on its own power. And uh, then I tried shifting it to park. And uh, the great thing about this BMW is uh, even to shif even shifting it to park is a electronic operation. And all the electronics were fried and uh, it wouldn't shift to park. So I was on top of a hill with a ditch in front of me. It was like a hill with the turn and at the front there was a ditch so if I just if I let go of the brakes it would just roll right into a ditch and the car probably would have been totaled I was super scared I was all alone I was like out in the middle of like cornfield country on the highway and so you know I called my mom she got really freaked out and uh, what I ended, what we ended up deciding to do is uh, we called 911 we asked one of them to come out and I wanted the guy to park his cruiser in front of my x5 and for me to roll into it and uh, just stop it and make it stop like that because otherwise there was no other way to stop it power steering was screwed and uh, I don't think I would have been able to turn it away from the ditch you know this was the only way we could think of to get it out of the ditch and I think we were gonna get it towed but uh, you know somehow miraculously uh, by the time the, the, the cop came the electronics started to turn back on by themselves I was able to at least put it in park and put on the emergency brake Fun fact, emergency brake is also electronic on this car, so that also failed. Um, and uh, we let it sit there like that. He drove me to uh, a nearby pilot gas station that was open 24-7. And then my dad had to come pick me up. My dad came in my Lexus like two hours later. And we drove back to this piece of crap parked on the side of the highway. Um, he got in. It turned on and uh, everything was perfect so we just drove off all the all the warning lights went away there's no problem so uh then uh obviously like the next day we got it uh inspected at the dealership at 81,556 miles and uh these guys charged me 325 dollars and 44 cents just to inspect what's wrong with it oh and uh after that whole incident uh, there was like a really strong smell coming from the vents like a burnt like it was like a really strong chemical smell Something was getting burned and uh, we couldn't drive it for more than like five ten minutes without um, Like I, I don't even know how to describe it guys. It was like burnt It was like burnt acid battery eggs kind of smell and it like burned your eyes and it hurt your throat Breathing that stuff in so uh, yeah got that all inspected. They charged us three hundred twenty five dollars and forty four cents just to inspect that uh, they told us a bunch of our coolant lines were failing. Surprise, surprise, they were all cracked. They were leaking coolant onto the alternator, and uh, they quoted us $4,295.70 to get that all fixed. Um, we ended up getting the turbo coolant lines replaced after that. That was $612.56. Uh, we ordered a new alternator because the way this truck is set up, uh, the coolant lines run on top of the alternator so when the coolant lines cracked and started leaking it started leaking coolant all over the alternator fried the alternator had to get a new one that was six hundred nine dollars and nineteen cents and uh the battery got fried again so that was another hundred ninety nine dollars and ninety five cents um doesn't give a total here does it i'll total it up you'll see it on the screen uh then what did we do then, that didn't stop the smells. Uh, my mom drove around for another two months, um, and, and she was just complaining the whole time. It got so bad that she just refused to drive it. It was making her cough like crazy. Even after driving the truck, even if she didn't drive it for another like two days, she would still be coughing like crazy. It was really messing up her lungs. It was, I mean, it was, I can't like emphasize it enough. It was a really, really bad like chemical odor coming out of these vents, guys. And uh, so we took it back. They ended up replacing a whole bunch of um, coolant pipes. The cross, I think one of them was like a crossover hose, um, turbo coolant lines. I think that was, yeah, turbo coolant lines we already did. Bunch of hoses and uh, clamps, gaskets, and uh, all in. Replacing more coolant lines cost me $2,269.17. Oh boy, you guys tired of this yet? Um, what else had a water pump replaced under warranty that was free had to get even more coolant lines fixed because apparently the other however much it was two three thousand dollars was not enough uh, and we had to dump in another one thousand five hundred eighty four dollars and ninety eight cents to to just 
Honestly, we've replaced like every single coolant line in this whole truck at this point. It's got a brand new cooling system. And uh, so yeah, 1000 they wanted $1,849.93, talked them down to $1,584.98, and uh, that was the end of the coolant pipe problems, right? Spoke too soon, more coolant problems. I, guys, it's just like, I don't know if you can see, can see it or not, but it's just like a whole, a vent pipe, hose clamp, return pipe, another return pipe, asbestos-free gaskets, O-rings, uh, gasket exchange turbocharging lines, collar nut, whole bunch of crap, more coolant lines basically, $1,861.77. I don't even know what the price is at this point. I know you guys can see it on the side wherever I'm putting it, but it's getting pretty ridiculous. What is this? More burning odor. Oh, this is a bulletin that like it was making burning odors and whatever. Um, after that, it's been uh, pretty good. Uh, we got a brake fluid flush and another oil change recently. That was three hundred nineteen dollars and seventy one cents. Uh, the headlights went bad, so I tried getting them restored at a detail shop. That was $53.38. It made no difference. I've tried restoring them myself with Plastex. Uh, there's a video on the channel already. Um, you can see it didn't work. Then I got it professionally detailed. You guys are probably gonna see up close shots right now. It still didn't work. Uh, the guy told me that they're cracking and yellowing from the inside and he can't do anything. So what I'm looking at right now is to talk to a uh, uh, guy that makes custom headlights and I'm gonna make him crack open the headlights and put in new lenses Which I'll order from eBay. I think they're like not even a hundred dollars and uh, whatever he wants to get them installed. So uh, we'll Try doing that and hopefully that fixes it then uh, We got a airbag recall took care of that um, Yep, airbag recall and that was it so we've owned this truck 2017 to 2018, 2018 to 2019. We've owned this for about two years and eight months. So about, what is that, 2.66 years? Almost three years we've had this truck. And that's how much it's cost to own. And uh, I can tell you right now, now the tires are bad. We're gonna put Conti Sport Contact tires on here. It's gonna, uh, all seasons, it's gonna cost us another thousand dollars. But other than that, I think it's good. Uh, it's solid and uh, hopefully we'll get another 10 20,000 miles out of it problem free and then we're switching to Lexus and never coming back to BMW ever again so uh, one more thing I forgot to add guys um, I forgot to talk about how much it's cost in fuel and how much it's cost in insurance um, I don't know the fuel cost off the top of my head because we don't keep every single receipt from the gas stations that's just kind of stupid um, it's not like a company car or anything so uh, Basically, we bought this truck with, uh, I think, less than 61,000 miles. We'll just put it at 61,000 miles for the sake of the video. So we bought it at 61,000 miles. It's at about 86,000 miles right now. So basically, we've driven it 25,000 miles over almost three years. And uh, so, you know, like uh, while I'm talking here, I'll do a whole calculation on the side that you guys will see how much it costs in fuel. Uh, for the three years uh, and 25,000 miles. So there's that total and uh, I'll go ask my dad and uh, figure out how much it's cost to insure this thing for that long. Um, and uh, we'll put that total on the side here as well. And uh, one more thing I forgot to talk about guys. Uh, it's all, There's a video on it already on the channel. We ended up adding a BMW logo projector puddle light. So every time you open the door, a BMW logo shines on the ground. Um, they were about eight, nine dollars uh, for a set of two. And so obviously you needed two sets of two, one set for the front doors, one set for the rear doors. And uh, so we installed those ourselves. There's a video on the channel if you're interested already. And uh, so yeah, we're just gonna, we're just gonna call that $18 and we're gonna throw that in there. All right. There's your grand total.
and uh, I can't see it right now, but I'm sure it's uh, it's at least a five-digit number. Am I right? It's gonna be a five-digit number. There you have it. That is the price of looking rich with a BMW X5 50i M Sport. Uh, I hope you guys found this video um, entertaining and uh, if you were looking to buy one of these things I hoped it was helpful in that it showed you that these things are complete hunks of crap and uh, run far far away um, but uh, yeah guys with that I'll see you guys next video